Hello everyone. Happy Friday and First Chapter Friday day. Today I'm going to be presenting to you Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan. Nobody's perfect. I was taken to see an educational consultant that autumn and the woman did an evaluation. She sent my parents a letter. I read it. It said I was highly gifted. Are people lowly gifted or medium gifted or just gifted? It's possible that all labels are curses unless they're on cleaning products because in my opinion it's not really a great idea to see people as just one thing. Every person has lots of ingredients to make them into what is always a one-of-a-kind creation. We are all imperfect genetic stews. According to the consultant Mrs. Grace V. Merman, the challenge for parents of someone highly gifted was to find ways to keep a child engaged and stimulated. But I think she was wrong. Almost everything interests me. Counting by sevens. I love all these. <laughs> okay. Chapter one, Willow Chance. A genius shoots at something no one else can see and hits it. We sit together outside the Foster's Freeze at our sea green metal picnic table. All four of us. We eat soft ice cream, which has been plunged into a vat of liquid chocolate. Then that hardens into a crispy shell. I don't tell anyone that what makes this works is wax, or to be more accurate, edible food grade paraffin wax. As the chocolate cools, it holds the vanilla goodness prisoner. Our job is to set it free. Ordinarily, I don't even eat ice cream cones. And if I do, I obsess in such a precise way as to prevent even a drop of disorder. But not today. I'm in a public place. I'm not even spying. And my ice cream cone is a big, drippy mess. I'm right now someone that other people might find interesting to observe. Why? Well, first of all, I'm speaking Vietnamese, which is not my native tongue. I really like that expression because in general, I think people don't give this contracting muscle credit for how much work it does. So thank you, tongue. Sitting here, shaded by the afternoon sun, I'm using my Vietnamese whenever I can, which turns out to be often. I'm talking to my new friend, May, but even her always surly and scary because he's older big brother, Quang Ha, says a few words to me in their now only semi-secret language. Del Duke, who brought us here in his car, is quiet. He does not speak Vietnamese. I do not like to exclude people. I'm the one who's always excluded, so I know how that feels. But I'm okay with Mr. Duke being an observer. He is a school counselor, and listening is a big part of counseling. Or at least it should be. May does the lion's share of speaking and eating. I give her my comb once I've had enough. And all I know for certain with the sun on our faces and the sweet ice cream holding our attention, that this is a day that I will never forget. 17 minutes after our arrival, we're back in Del Duke's car. May wants to drive by Hagen Oaks, which is a park. Big geese live there year round. She thinks I should see them. Because she's two years older than me, she falls into the trap of thinking all little kids want to stare at something like fat ducks. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate waterfowl, 
But in the case of Hagen Oaks Park, I'm more interested in the city's decision to plant native plants than I am in the birds. I think by the look on Dell's face, I can see his eyes in the rear view mirror, that he's not very excited about either thing, but he drives by the park anyway. At Hagen Oaks, no one gets out of the car because Dell says we need to go home. When we first got to Foster's Freeze, I called my mom to explain that I'd be late getting back from school. When she didn't answer, I left a message. I did the same thing on my dad's cell phone. It's strange that I haven't heard from either of them. If they can't answer the phone, they always quickly return my call. Always. There's a police car parked in the driveway of my house when Del Duke turns onto my street. The neighbors to the south of us moved out and their place is in foreclosure. A sign on the dead front lawn says, Bank Owned. To the north are renters, who I've only seen once in seven months and four days ago, which was on the day that they arrived. I stare at the police car, and I wonder if someone broke into the vacant house. Didn't Mum say it was trouble to have an empty place in the neighborhood? But that wouldn't explain why the police are in our driveway. As we get closer, I can see that there are two officers in the patrol car, and from the way they are slouched, it seems like they've been there a while. I feel my whole body tense. In the front seat, Quang Ha says, What are the cops doing in your driveway? May's eyes dart from her brother's back to me. The expression on her face now looks to be a question. I think she wonders if my dad steals things or if I have a cousin who hits people. Maybe I come from a whole family of troublemakers. We don't know each other very well, so these would all be possibilities. I'm silent. I'm late coming home. Did my mom or my dad get so worried they call the police? I left them messages. I told them that I was okay. I can't believe they would do such a thing. Del Duke doesn't even have the car completely stopped before I open the door, which of course is very dangerous. I get out and I head toward my house, not even bothering with my red rolling luggage that's packed with my schoolwork. I've taken only two steps into the driveway before the door opens on the patrol car and a female officer appears. The woman has a thick ponytail of orange colored hair. She doesn't say hello. She just lowers her sunglasses and says, do you know Roberta and James Chance? I try to answer, but my voice won't come out any louder than a whisper. Yes. I want to add, but it's Jimmy Chance. No one ever calls my dad James, but I can't. The officer fumbles with her sunglasses. Even though she's dressed the part, the woman seems to be losing all of her authority. She mumbles. Oh, and okay, um, and you are? I swallow, but my mouth is suddenly dry and I feel a lump form into my throat. I'm their daughter. Del Duke is out of the car now, and he has my luggage with him as he starts across the sidewalk. May is right at his heels. Kwang Ha stays put. The second officer, a young man, then comes around and stands next to his partner, but neither of them speaks. Just silence. Horrible silence. And then the two police officers turn their attention to Dell. They both look anxious. The female officer manages to say, and where do you fit in? Dell clears his throat. He suddenly looks like he's sweating from every gland in his body. He's barely able to speak. Uh, I'm Del Duke. 
I work as a counselor for the school district. I see two of these kids for counseling, and I'm just driving them home. I can see that both officers are instantly relieved. The female officer begins nodding, showing support and almost enthusiasm as she says, A counselor, so she's heard? I find enough of a voice to ask, Heard what? But neither of the police will look at me. They're all about Dell now. Can we have a word with you, sir? I watch Dell's sweaty, wet hand release from the black vinyl luggage handle, and he follows the officers as they move away from me, away from the patrol car and out to the still hot pavement of the street. Standing there, they huddle together with their backs turned so that as I watch, they look lit by the low end of the day sun like an evil three-headed monster. And that's what they are because their voices, while muffled, are still capable of being understood. I clearly hear four words. There's been an accident. And after that, In whispers comes the news that the two people I love the most in the world are gone forever. No. No, 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 no. I need to rewind. I want to go back. Will anyone go with me? There are seven things to know about Willow Chance. One, she's different, as in strange, and a genius. Two, almost everything interests her, but some things like plants and medical conditions interest her more than others. Three, she has learned the hard way that life can be extremely unfair. Four, She understands that family is what you make it and that people who understand you and choose to have you in their lives are the most important people. Five, she doesn't have a lot of friends, but she would do anything for the ones that she does have. Six, she knows that the most wonderful thing in the world is feeling like you belong. And seven, Her story will make you laugh, cry, and appreciate your friends and family and the things around you in a whole new way. That was pretty touching, pretty pretty sad. I hope it wasn't too triggering for some people, but if it was actually, then this is a good book for you because there's so much that occurs to this poor girl who started off with very little and then it became even worse and what happens from there so please check it out and i hope you have a very good week thanks for watching